Let's find more areas between curves. Again, having a basic graph is going to be helpful. Y equals X cubed looks something like this. And as always, not the best graph, but Y equals 5X is a straight line with the slope of five. And once again, to find the areas in between these two curves, we need to split up our integral into two pieces. One from this intersection point to zero, and another integral from zero up to this intersection point. So in order to find our limits, we find our intersection points by taking the two functions and setting them equal to each other. We can factor an x out. We get one intersection point of x equals zero. Of course, we knew that. The other two intersection points come from this factor. We're gonna get plus or minus the square root of five. So the area between these two curves is going to be represented by two integrals, one from negative root 5 to 0 and the other from 0 to the square root of 5. In the first region where the x values vary from negative root 5 to 0, you'll notice that the top function is x cubed and the bottom function is 5x. In the region where the x values go from 0 to the square root of 5, you'll notice that the top function is 5x and the bottom function is x cubed. It's a good thing that we're experts at integrating. We can integrate x cubed to get 1 fourth x to the fourth and we can integrate negative 5x to get negative 5 halves x squared. And then all we have to do is plug in our oddly inconvenient limits, but this will give us a good opportunity for some algebra. Plugging in our upper and lower limits of integration gives us this. Sorry I ran out of room for this term, but we're just plugging in a bunch of zeros. And we can simplify and maybe we can start the simplification by looking at this negative square root of 5 squared. The negative goes away because of the even power. The square root of 5 squared is just 5. That must mean that the square root of 5 to the fourth power would then be 25 or 5 squared. Okay, if you're going with me on that, then these last two terms are going to be very similar. Oops, one thing that I do need to correct, uh, this negative sign needed to distribute through these parentheses, making this term a plus. Sorry about that, but now I think we're back on track. We have a couple of negative 25 fourths terms and a couple of 25 halves terms. We can handle this in a lot of different ways. We could combine these two fourths terms into negative 50 fourths and the two halves terms into positive 50 halves. We could then think of this 50 halves as 100 fourths, thus giving us a final answer of 50 fourths, which reduces to 25 halves. And that looks good to me. All right, let's zoom out on this thing and let's check out the next problem.